the Idaho Mastery Learning Virtual Conference. Welcome and thank you. Your patient support and dedication has inspired the work at the SDE. Uh, really, it has. Um, every day, I, I enjoy what I do and have a challenge, and I appreciate you uh, pushing and you supporting. And during the COVID time, hopefully you guys had a chance to uh, share a little bit about your, uh, we'll have a chance to share about your experiences. Um, I did a lot of thinking and in my wrapped up in my, in my little office next to the furnace at home. And I realized that mastery is a lot like riding a unicycle. So I saw a unicycle, realized that ah, I could probably do that. It's a lot like a bicycle. Thought I had the balance and everything to do it, um, but it does take a special effort to move towards a unicycle. Now, it took a lot of modeling, advice. I Googled tons of videos. I wore my safety precautions. I had lots and lots of crashes. I practiced a ton. As a matter of fact, every lunch hour during COVID, I went up and practiced in my garage while it was raining or outside. Now, once I got the hang of it, it didn't get any easier. It still took a lot of focus and dedication. But I made it. Across the garage to start, and then I had to open up the garage door and let myself out. Hopefully you guys feel that we have opened the door for you and let you out to share, to innovate. So why am I sharing about a unicycle? I had one for 20 years in my garage. I looked at it, I bumped it, I moved it around, Every once in a while I sat on it, had no idea, but finally decided to do it. So during my lunch hour, I had a chance to do that. What have you done or learned during COVID? When you see a box like this, that's yellow background, um, it's a chance for you to participate in the chat box. So for our first one, what did you learn or accomplish during your COVID experience? Um, well, next few minutes, go ahead and try to answer that. Well, everyone, I don't know why the music stopped or the progress bar stopped. I hope you are still progressing and always doing so. Um, thank you for filling in the chat box. I look forward to reading those a little bit later. All right. I hope you can see the beef wellington and the good old peanut butter and jelly. 
Uh, I tried to get the new scratch and sniff technology out there so you could scratch your screen and smell it. It does smell delicious. That's what I'm having for breakfast this morning. Okay, just kidding. Um, but I wanted to share these pictures because they uh, remind me of everybody. They remind me of the stories that I've shared with you from around the state. I've met with just about every group and had some wonderful insight. The picture on the left and the picture on the right both represent teachers who are motivated and found the individual needs of their students, who supported them, who have said, you know what, we need to Maslow before we bloom. Let's take a look at some of the things that you're doing and let you know that we care about you. And so we don't have a chance to do that in person this year and give each other hugs and high fives and all those things that we used to. It's a little bit different with our COVID experience. Um, thank you for sharing in the chat box. In the, the next few minutes, I will take the opportunity to share what you have shared with me. So for our celebration slideshow, I wanna thank you for what you shared with me. And recognize that uh, it took a little it took a little bit of leeway and freedom for me to take your words, which I didn't change, but put them in a format that fit for consistency. And it only offers a glimpse. If we were doing this in person, we had a very large room assigned just for face-to-face -face meeting, greeting, networking. Today is just a glimpse. Perhaps you'll take notes. Maybe you'll find something that uh, will inspire you to to keep moving on. Uh, that will confirm what you have done. I'm sure you'll be impressed and inspired to continue to do more and reflect on what you do. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen and get to our slideshow.
All right, that was awesome for me. I appreciate your efforts in doing that. I'm going to share my other screen to guide the rest of the conference. Please excuse a few seconds of doing that. Hopefully you appreciate that as much as I did. Um, it was very easy to make that because I had great stuff to work with. All right, we are just about on time with our schedule. I've met lots of neat people in this opportunity that I've had in, in working with Mastery and around the state. Um, one of those opportunities has been with people outside of the state um, who have helped us and, and give us a national perspective. And so I have met Virgil, and oh, I forgot to change it, Virgil. I apologize to uh, Mrs. Hammonds. Uh, it should be an S at the end. I thought I caught all the shortcomings. Uh, so it is Virgil Hammonds who will be sharing with us some some uh, uh, of his perspectives and his story. And so I'd like to welcome Virgil Hammonds. Um, I love the quote there. I believe it is our responsibility. And I think you can fit in there just about anything from our current um, society. Um, but I, I look at that um, broadly. To inspire and empower wonder about learning opportunities that can change the lives and futures of our kiddos and communities. You can see a little bit about Virgil with his pictures there, with that quote, and we look forward to hearing about uh, what he is going to share with us now. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. And just for folks, in case folks are wondering, um, Mrs. Hammond, so I heard this weekend um, in speaking with my mother that she heard about this Idaho con Virgil conference, and she signed up, so she might be on. <laughs> so if she is, hi, Mom. Good to see you again. Um, kind of anyway, but great to great to be with you all um, calling in from Maine and uh, Actually, so I saw someone in the chat box said that you had frost not so long ago We had four inches of snow on May 1st um, and being a, a California kid at heart um, It was a little little difficult to uh, deal with that, but um, I'm coming with a few partners from KnowledgeWorks. I'm excited to be with y'all and uh, agree with Kathy that that uh, slideshow was inspiring. It's incredible to see the great work that's happening in Idaho and real kudos and high five from, from Maine to you all in Idaho for the tremendous work you're doing um, pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and, and in the future as well. Want to introduce a few of my colleagues that are joining us virtually as well, and, and we'll reply to um, questions or some thoughts uh, in the chat box as well. We have Lauren McCauley calling in or joining us from South Carolina and Carla Phillips um, will also be uh, is also on joining us from Arizona. So we come from all over the country eager and excited to learn with you all in Idaho. Um, but who am I and who is KnowledgeWorks? Just a little bit about us. Um, for us we're like you all um, firm believers in, in what personalization and mastery can do for our learners and for our communities and ultimately for our society as well. Uh, for us, we have essentially three large facets of our work. Um, we have uh, a team that is focused on exploring the future of learning. So what does learning look like in the future and how might we learn from that to help transform what we do with policy and what we do in the classroom and in our schools and in partnership with our communities. So just so we're grounded in the, in the kind of the same page as to what personalization and competency is, want to kind of give a, a bigger overview of the research that's been conducted over the years. Um, so for us, we recently, oh geez, a few years ago, released um, some research that focused on, uh, much like you all, uh, a few dozen learning communities are doing real innovative, transformative work that puts learners at the center of the learning process. And what we found is there are three meta themes that exist in each of these learning communities. One, a strong aspirational vision that thinks about the unique needs, interests, and aspirations of each child. Um, a strong culture that is, um, that is inclusive of all stakeholders. So it's not simply, these learning communities did not simply have a strategic design that was done with a school board and a, a central office, but really it was done in partnership with um, educators, with kids, with families, um, with community partners, 
and done so in the third meta theme in a highly transparent way. And so these three meta themes essentially um, existed throughout um, the learning community. You would see these common practices um, in existence um, in every facet of, of these communities. And the reason we say learning communities um, instead of school systems or school districts is because we, for, we absolutely believe in the power of community. When everyone understands what that vision is and understands their role in supporting that vision, you transform from a school system to one focused on learning in a communal, deep way. Which brings us to kind of these, these other themes that exist, that existed or continue to exist and thrive um, in these learning communities. Uh, much like what we saw on the slideshow um, prior to my introduction, um, a deep, deep focus on learning at uh, not just uh, lower levels and not just a recall level, but really going deep um, in purposeful and intentional ways with essentially curriculum that is, that is accessible, it's equitable, it's driving learning for kids from, from all backgrounds, from all neighborhoods, um, from, from a variety of experiences, while doing so in a way that inspires their voice to thrive, right? Where, where they have um, a, not just a say, but they have um, the opportunity to make ex uh, real decisions about what they are learning and how they will learn it. All the while, us as educators thinking about, um, and us as a learning community, thinking about how are we developing the, the social and emotional skills that will prepare our kids to thrive in any environment post our involvement in, in, their, in their education. Kind of foundational and rooted in all, in all of these key pieces and these key elements here are the very pieces that we all focus on as educators, right? So what does that mean for us as, uh, uh, about our instruction, about the curriculum we utilize? Um, how does that, if we are gonna do deeper learning in an equitable and essential way, driving to, to learner agency, thinking about how we're developing these, um, their skill sets, how does that transform what we do about um, assessment? Um, how, does, how do we rethink um, what assessment and learning experiences could be? Um, the great folks at um, Redesign and the Center for Collaborative Ed are helping us to think about, geez, how might we, um, how might we transform um, how we capture what students have learned and how they might demonstrate what they have learned, which really leads us to the learning environment and the types of supports we provide our kids. And if, and if we're gonna do this, this personalization in a systemic communal way, how might we do that for our adult learners as well, our educators, um, our folks throughout the community? How might we replicate the same processes that we wanna present and create for our kids, um, for the adults throughout the community as well? And in thinking about that, um, how do we integrate um, partnerships to be much more, um, uh, how might partnerships actually create these opportunities to exist throughout the community? And much like what we saw throughout the pandemic and you all commented in your sharing, geez, how do we leverage technology and new sets of data that might help us to understand where kids are? So, a couple, actually last year, the Aurora Institute convened um, or has convened over the last couple of years, a number of, of um, practitioners and other organizations to rethink what the definition of personalized competency-based learning could be. And it went through a bit of an evolution. So I try to highlight in blue just what that evolution was. And the big pieces that we've been discussing here Imagine that the idea, um, going back to uh, myself as an educator um, in the classroom, I really did not do this exceptionally well, but imagine if we could um, inspire kids to make important decisions about what they're learning on a daily basis. Imagine if we actually provided them the opportunity to demonstrate the learning or do an assessment that was actually meaningful to what they are aspiring to accomplish or learn or do in the near future. And what if we were able to create a system that was able to provide that timely differentiated support for each of our kids and not timely as in at the quarter or at the semester or at the end of the year, but on a daily and an hourly basis? What if we empowered and gave our kids the opportunities to drive um, what that looked like? Um, and this whole idea, it really we'll talk about this in a little bit and share some stories, but what if, we, what if we gave kids the opportunity to not drive to this um, surface level of understanding, but really to mastery? 
how deep could their learning be if they were expected to reach levels of mastery all along the way? How could we accelerate learning? How could we go deeper with learning if that were the norm from the very beginning? And how might we do so in ways that um, are timely and um, we provide unique pathways um, for our kiddos to be able to do just that? And if we do those things, what does that mean for our culture, our structures of our schools, and our community systems? Now more than ever, we're reliant on, um, we need to be reliant and, and uh, supportive of one another in a much more communal way than we ever have been. How could we do that in partnership with, with those around us? Um, I know um, as an educator and, and my wife is a school nurse, it seems like more and more is coming on to uh, our school systems. But what if we invited our other communal civic-based organizations to be a part of the lift, to be a part of the design? If we welcome them, that, welcome, welcome them into our school systems and we in turn went out into the community to be a part of this lift. And lastly, um, these rigorous common expectations for learning. Is what, we are, is what I am requiring in my classroom, in my community, equal and as deep and as, and as opportunistic as what you are providing in your learning community? And those are the questions we should be asking ourselves as we're rethinking um, what, it, what is possible for our kids, much as Idaho has rethought um, in its framework and thinking about what is possible for Idaho children in Idaho communities. Let me see if I can advance here. So just to give you a little bit of an overview on how, how personalization and mastery or personalized content-based learning has spread throughout the country. Um, you could see um, the country, this is in 2012. The red states are those that have policy, a policy ecosystem that really allows for personalization and mastery to exist. And, and the green are those that are developing and, and the yellow are emerging. This is in 2012. Um, and look at us now. Our country is ready. The policy conditions are, are, are there. As educators and as community members, the time is ripe, right? We're also going through this awakening right now as, an, as a country, as a world, where we can truly rethink what is possible for our children and for our communities in a much more purposeful, intentional, and personalized way. What if we were able to drive, leverage this policy to be able to drive to social justice? Guess what? That opportunity exists now. It exists within, especially in the framework that is about to be unveiled for Idaho, it absolutely exists. Let's start with a short video. How do I know? A lot of people, when they think of the phrase, how do I know, they always want to put the And let me preface this. If you've seen this already, I'm just going to say this is one of those videos where it just never gets old. But I want you to kind of, as you're, as you're watching this video, Think about yourself a bit. Start to think about um, what reflection comes to mind when you hear the message in this video. And we'll capture that in the chat in a bit. What behind it? How do I know what I'm supposed to do? The, the question that you really should ask is how do I know why I'm here? Because when you know your why, your what becomes more clear and more impactful. If you know, like for instance, um, people know that I do comedy, but that's what I do. My why is to inspire people to walk in purpose. So I can do comedy, I can write books, I can be in a movie, because all of it is motivated by my why. In fact, I have a new, uh, a new web series out called Michael Jr. Break Time. Uh, we probably just did the sixth episode. It's on YouTube. So every single Wednesday at three o'clock, we drop a new episode on YouTube of Michael Jr. Break Time. What it is, is it's me, I travel around the country and I do stand-up comedy, in case you didn't know. And in the middle of my comedy set sometime, I'll stop and just talk to my audience. And we've been filming this and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So I'm, we're in Winston-Salem. I'm gonna show you a clip from Winston-Salem. And I'm just talking to this guy in the audience and he tells me that he's a, uh, a musical instructor at a school. So I was like, all right, you're a musical instructor. You know, can you sing? Let me hear you sing a song. So this is what happened at the last episode of Michael Jr.'s Break Time. Check it. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let me get a couple, let me get a couple bars of like uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Let me, go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that 
saved a wretch like me. Wow. That rock could sing. You know what I'm saying? Now, what you give me the version is if uh, your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick. If you know which version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. Let me see what you got. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Okay, um, here's what I want you to catch. The first time I asked him to sing, he knew what he was doing. The second time, he knew why he was doing it. When you know your why, your what becomes more impactful because you're walking towards or in your purpose. So in the chat box, I've heard a lot, I've seen a lot in Aaron's um, video here, but how does your why shine through you? How is it that personalization and mastery helps your why shine through you and your kids? I'll give you a couple minutes to reply. About another 30 seconds. I'm coming to the, towards the end of my time, but I'll share my why. And if I get a, my voice gets a little creaky, just know it's, um, as much as I've told this story, it still gets me. Um, but it's also what has shaped me um, into the educator, the father, um, the human that I am. So I started teaching, um, one of my first teaching opportunities was in um, a small community in, in Central California. Um, a, a community I grew up, um, close to and was very fond of. My family often worked um, the fields around this community. And so it's one I knew very well. And when I moved back home from college um, to teach, um, there was an opportunity to teach in this community of Lindsay, California. And I thought this is great because this is a community full of um, people just like me with families just like my own, um, families that have come to the country to, to achieve um, the American dream, um, by working hard, and oftentimes that meant um, working in the fields, oftentimes that meant working a number of jobs to provide for your family. I thought this is exactly who I should be teaching. 
Um, so I worked really hard as a, as a middle school English teacher um, for kids that were new to the country. Uh, this often meant we're delivering instruction in Spanish and in English. Um, but we saw great gains and I was really proud of, of our learners. I was really proud of my work um, with them in partnership with their families. Um, and I thought I was doing a really great job. And uh, fast forward a few years, um, I was given the opportunity to, to be a principal at the, at the local high school in Lindsay. And um, it was the beginning of the summer. Um, really, there was only a couple of us in the office. Um, it's July 1st. And um, in walks into my office, um, a family, um, a father and, and a son. And I recognized the son as a former student of mine. And immediately I got excited and started to, you know, hug him and welcome him into the office. And I'd never met his father. So I introduced myself and, and I asked, um, how it could be of help. And, um, before I even gave him a chance to, um, to reply, I started asking, um, who will call this, this young man, junior, it's not his real name, but we'll call him junior for the story. And, I said, Junior, what are you doing? You should have you graduated? Are you about to be a senior? You've got to be close, right? What's what's going on? Is it college? Is it work? What are you doing? And and because um, his father introduced himself in Spanish, I'm asking him these questions in Spanish. And his father says, Well, that's actually why we're here. And he looks around um, my office, and it's in a bit of disarray. I'm a bit embarrassed, but he's looking for something, and I wasn't quite sure. Um, but what he found was um, a copy of the, of the day's paper. And on the paper was an article about local boy comes home to be principal. Um, really proud of it, but was kind of embarrassed by the fact that he was going to point to it. And um, quickly, the, 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 my kind of selfless thinking um, uh, kind of it changed. Um, because what Junior's dad did is he put the article in front of him and said, um, Hey, Miho, will you read or tell Mr. Hammonds which part of the article you like the best? Go ahead, tell him. We talked about it this morning. And Junior did not, you know, up until this point, he really hadn't said anything to me. His, his eyes were down, which was unusual because we had a great rapport, a great relationship, but not unusual to the culture. Um, and I thought in front of his father, perhaps he was um, uh, trying to be modest. And so, but dad continues to push him, uh, mijo, mijo, read the part that you like the best about this article. Um, and to the point where it was very uncomfortable and junior finally stands up in anger and says, why are you doing this to me, dad? You're embarrassing me. You know, I can't read. And he stormed out of my office. Didn't say a single word to me in that entire time. And so his dad looks at me straight in my eyes and says, you know, we, my son says great things about you as a teacher. Um, but he just graduated from, from your school without the ability to read. Just please make sure this doesn't happen to any more kids. We'll take care of them, but please make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. And for me, that was the why, right? That was like, holy smokes, I was working really hard with, with all of my kids. And despite it all, here he was, he graduated without the inability to read. How is that possible? How is that possible? And so I shared this story with the team and it wasn't the team's fault is the reality was he had advanced through our system because he was a really great kid. He came to school every single day. He worked hard. He never caused trouble. And because of he was such a great kid, we let him advance with D's and C's for doing just enough. Right. And by doing by us advancing him, we had done a disservice to him. And by that moment, when we shared that story out, um, the staff started to do some internal digging with about other kids. And it wasn't just about junior, it was just about our entire system and not just in Lindsay, but throughout the country. And at that moment, we decided to do something different. We started to talk about what it means to truly hit mastery. What if we could hold kids to mastery? Yes, our kids, our kids who, who for many don't believe um, mastery is possible. What if we could do that? And what if we did so in highly personalized ways? And I'll fast forward to right now, Lindsay, California is really a model exemplar community that has done it really well for the last dozen years. And they have gone from the number one ranked um, high school in the country, which in California at that time meant you were the worst, to now one of the top, one of the top school systems learning communities in the entire state of California, overachieving about, amongst other communities with a, so many more resources than what they have. And why? Because they're doing so in highly personalized ways and they're ensuring that all kids 
are driving towards mastery, not just in high schools or in middle schools, but from the very beginning, from the time they set foot in their learning community. And you know what, when you're able to do that, what we're talking about is about making equity our pedagogy. And not just talking about equity as, as a noun, as an aspiration, but we're using it as a verb. Imagine if we could actually make equity a verb as we're delivering our instruction. And what you, are, what you all are considering and doing in that video that I saw from Aaron, and now in this framework that's about to be revealed, that's exactly what you are doing. So I, from Maine, from California, and from, as you saw in the, in the policy map, with many others across the country, we send you to Idaho a huge high five for the tremendous work you're doing. It is a, it's tremendously hard, but it is tremendously inspirational. Thank you for making equity your pedagogy. I'm excited to learn more with you. Aaron, I turn it back to you, sir. Thank you, Virgil. I, I, uh, I've, I appreciate that in, in many ways. Um, touched by your story, touched by the reality of it. Um, and I think we all have uh, done a disservice to someone in the past. And so looking to the future and realizing how we can improve is, is a goal for all of us. Thank you for inspiring us and sharing those, that national perspective. Um, as, as we uh, move forward, um, I, I think a word that, that shows up to all of us now these days is equity. Um, and we are fighting that in Idaho in all sorts of ways. And one of the ways we're fighting it is we don't have what we need all the time. And that includes resources uh, with family, resources with technology, resources personal, um, and all those things. So uh, the COVID experience turned out to be an amazing thing for some some learning communities. I'm going to add that to my vocabulary. I have a sticky on my wall for that. So thank you very much, Virgil, um, for that part of it, personally. Um, so let's take a few minutes to reflect, please, in the chat box and consider how the transition to COVID and alternative learning went for your classroom, school, and district. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen for us in the fall. We may do some alternative learning there too. So how can we take what we've learned looking at that equity lens for all our students? Front page of the newspaper yesterday was how our 504 and IEP kids are, are not learning the way they need to. So how can we support their learning? Take a few minutes in the chat box, reflect on our practices for this past little bit of COVID and looking to the future and being inspired by the words of our friend Virgil.
Thank you for making those comments. Um, and uh, thinking about that and reflecting on that, um, shout out to my LEA friends who have uh, repeatedly told me, and I've learned myself, but I like being reminded by them. As I'm reminded by you guys and, and helping my life improve, a narrative is a great way to share a story, a powerful way to do so. Um, so hopefully you took a chance to, to share a narrative a little bit about what happened with you, your family. I saw a few of those comments and chats about your personal stories with students who have moved on. Thank you for sharing Virgil, your own personal family that have had experiences um, with, with all these different things. So I appreciate that and look forward to reading them in a little more detail. Um, I do need to apologize. I missed three schools. I've looked and looked and looked over these decks, um, but Rocky Mountain uh, in Bonneville uh, School District, Salmon River um, in the Salmon River District, I guess, and Tigert over in Soda Springs were missed on the um, slideshow. So I have their information here, not the cool background slide, but I want to share this is from Rocky Mountain Middle School, some of their pictures. And if I can get the information from Tigert, I will add it. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Yeah, pretty impressive to see that they have an intervention specialist who is helping integrate through all those things. Um, that's, that's a great uh, investment of time, of resources, of commitment to each other and, and finding someone to help out with that. So thank you, Rocky Mountain. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Um, those of you who know me know that I, I like action. I'm not a huge talker. Uh, I'd rather keep things simple and go out and play a little Frisbee or ride my bike or something like that. So I have to find ways to keep myself accountable. Um, we met with um, the superintendent lots of times over these, over these things and with our legislator friends this year preparing to meet with them and reviewing, uh, in reviewing what we had to do, we found inspiration, we found motivation, we found accountability. So with Carla Phillips from KnowledgeWorks, um, we spent a lot of time looking and, and realized that we have some stuff we need to take care of. And so that is called um, something statute 33, 16, 32. I can't remember all the time. I remember those numbers pretty well. So this is what we've been asked to do. Um, advise superintendent of public instruction, that's Superintendent Ibarra, and the State Board of Education, they live upstairs from us in the progress of the transition to mastery-based education. I hope they're watching the video. I hope they're hearing your words. I want to share it out, and I have lots of ways to do that. I'm excited to share, uh, to learn from you, and to, to unveil the things we have today. Develop evidence-based recommendations for continued implementation. The evidence we saw today from Virgil across America, that counts. We are can continue to this. It's a national trend. Student-centered learning helps students in so many ways, in so many places. We need to continue to implement the policies of the legislature and the State Board of Education for the transition to mastery-based education. We spent a lot of time figuring out what that means. And I'm excited to say that our framework does implement the policies of legislature. The network that you guys have been a part of for the IMEN has been amazing. We have had amazing professional development in the past and we'll have continued professional development in the future, including from you guys, I hope. Coaching and best practices is coming. We know those things. We've seen them, we've learned from you. The opportunity to learn from IMEN over the last few years has exposed hurdles, but not just hurdles, but opportunities to overcome them. And that's for all our Idaho school districts, charter schools, and like I said before, adding to my vocabulary, learning communities. The last one there, sustainability plan. What does that mean? We have some ideas. It's exciting to share today what that means. But also, you guys need to have a sustainability plan. Um, in talking to you, I've heard and seen what you have and hope that you recognize you have those in place. To say next year we want to do this, we have this, we learned this, those are sustainability plans. Um, that rubric, those that you're checking to see how you're measuring, those assessments they're using to determine what's working on, uh, working for you. We hope to hear those ideas in the next application process. So uh, my friend Carla, speaks in front of legislators all the time and she does a wonderful job. I hope I've met a little bit of what you charge me with, Carla, in recognizing our formal accountability. So this is what we have in delivery. 
We have a framework, elegant and simple, a place to hang everything that you're doing. We'll unveil that today. It's pretty impressive. I hope to hear from your comments today if it's, an, if it's a document that you would share with your school board and with your parents and with your peers and with your students that you can find yourself and your practices in it. The staging guide is a beautiful wrap up burrito blanket of smoothness and amazing opportunity to learn from you. It is everything that you've done almost um, that we can share out in an interactive way that will be available to everybody soon. We hope to have that unveiled July, July 1st, right around there and definitely available to use in the fall. Vital competencies. If we're looking at competency-based education, proficiency-based education, mastery-based student-centered learning, all sorts of terms, we have to have those competencies. We have created, identified, recognized support skills to support, uh, sub-skills to support the student, excuse me, the State Board of Education approved competencies and making that alignment and cooperation with them. I've talked to all the sites across the state except for a few with the same prompts so that we can network, so that I can be a matchmaker, so that I can see these things and say, it's not me, it's all of us, and make a searchable database so you can see what's going on across the state. Hope to have that available for us in the fall. The sustainability plan is comprehensive. It's coming, it's on its way, as is an evaluation plan. What does that mean for you? We're talking about that. We're also looking from the state level. And we'll have assessments and exemplars for that opportunity. So scaffolding, allowing, encouraging, building, developing, tossing all sorts of vocabulary and verbs there to make it sound exciting because it is. Um, we will send out in the next day or two links to all these documents and would love to capture your comment and feedback. All right, before the superintendent comes on, we have a few minutes. Um, I talked a lot of you shared your wonderful training this year. Um, and I've heard about what you will want to do, becoming Imagineers with education, uh, learning about different ways to present through workshops um, that you've learned and stuff. Thinking about that, what training would you appreciate further? You've seen other schools, you've heard from Virgil. Um, what would you like to become better at? And so what we're doing right now is we're creating our sustainability plan. What can we do to improve in Idaho? So in the chat box, please take a few minutes to uh, understand and reflect what you've done this year and appreciate where you would like to go. And we will record these things and that will be part of our sustainability plan. Thank you. Take a few minutes to do that.
um, Aaron again, thank you for those, those opportunities to chat there. Appreciate that. Um, I figured out how and why things stop a little bit. And it's, it's different with each slideshow. It's been interesting. Um, what's also interesting is the opportunity to be supported by a superintendent that loves this stuff um, and has shared that um, this is a top priority for her. So um, we now have the opportunity to, to learn, listen to our superintendent. Um, it is 10 o'clock. We're right on schedule. I'm going to stop sharing so that superintendent can, can hopefully get on. And again, please uh, take a little patience with us as we make that transition. Good morning, everybody, and good morning, Erin. Thank you so much for that introduction. I really appreciate you telling everybody how excited I am about this work. You know, as a former teacher, uh, it's just really hard for me to kind of step out of that role. So I just really appreciate you uh, driving home that message, Erin. Um, I, I am just really happy that I could be with everybody for a few minutes on Zoom this morning. Of course, we would all rather be together in person, and I hope that that happens very soon, but I'm just thrilled uh, that we can all be together to do this work however we need to do it. I want you to know how much I appreciate um, each of you for continuing the important work of expanding on mastery-based education in Idaho uh, and for participating again in a virtual convening. We all know that the COVID-19 pandemic is having far-reaching effects in almost all aspects of our life. The impact on education has been significant and has presented both challenges and opportunities. And I want to take this opportunity um, every time I get to thank you for the amazing job that you have done during the school closures. You truly showed how versatile uh, and innovative that Idaho educators are. And I get an opportunity to talk all about that this afternoon on Facebook as well. So just heartfelt thank you, let you know how grateful I am to make sure uh, that life went on for kids and they kept learning. For this group specifically, uh, what our schools and students experienced in the spring demonstrated mastery-based education is more important than ever. You and others who have adopted the practices of personalized learning have an advantage in being able to respond uh, to the unexpected interruptions of traditional teaching and learning. Your students know how to take ownership of their learning and seek out the help that they need to accomplish what it is that they need to do. As we look ahead to the fall and beyond our ability to be nimble, whether that's moving from in-person teaching to distance learning or to a blended model with a little bit of both, uh, this is a real opportunity, like I've told everyone around the state, to reimagine education. A learning culture that empowers students, coupled with instruction that pers personalizes learning and allows our students to demonstrate competencies will lead to success for students in any situation. I'm so excited about what you're going to be hearing today, which is the result of all of your hard work over the past four years. So in a few minutes, Todd and Aaron will unveil the new Idaho Mastery Framework, which should not be a surprise because it provides the foundation of our mastery work in Idaho and will inform the three Ps, we call it, the parents, the policymakers, and the practitioners, and the principals about this important work. I want to thank you for your contributions for getting us here again. It should not be a surprise as you were part of all of this. It's based on your experiences, your feedback, your collaboration, and I can't wait until this framework is shared with everyone to celebrate all of your hard work and accomplishments. You'll also today be discussing the staging guide, which is another important resource and a valuable tool that includes all of your incubation efforts and your innovative efforts over the past five years. The guide will support others in making the transition to mastery learning, no matter where they are at in this process. Those of you that have been with us as part of the cohort one, I thank you for taking the risk in the beginning. I remember all of those conversations uh, and how scary that was. Um, so thank you for um, making sure that students had what they need and you were part of reinventing education. I think it's important, like I said earlier, now more than ever, especially with COVID-19, to have every trick available and every opportunity available so that life goes on for kids. And for those that joined us in later stages of the journey, thank you for bringing new ideas and your new energy into this effort. You've all made the idea of mastery education happen in classrooms across the state and it is making a difference for our students. 
And the goal that you and I all share today is for Idaho students is so that they persevere in life and are ready uh, for college and careers. In 2017, the state adopted our college and career readiness competencies, aligning the work of mastery-based education uh, to these competencies will be the next critical step to ensure our students are prepared for their chosen path after high school. Uh, again, thank you for taking on this important work and I want to take this opportunity to let you all know that despite the economic challenges that we're facing as a result of COVID-19, the budget holdbacks for education um, have been difficult, but the funding for mastery-based education has not been cut. And I will continue to advocate for ongoing funding to expand participation in the Mastery Network uh, so that others can join us. Uh, see Aaron over there just as excited, jumping up and down. So, um, you know, that was really uh, something that the staff worked very hard on making sure uh, we had a lot of conversations around the support for mastery education. So uh, I also ask that you share your experiences around mastery education with your local legislators and your community members. Share how important this small investment has been in supporting your planning and coordination efforts as we look uh, to moving Idaho forward to a mastery model. The unprecedented challenges and changes that we've ex experienced as families, as schools and communities, and just as ourselves has shown us how innovation and how innovative and resilient uh, that we all are. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for a commitment to your students. Uh, again, I, I just wanna impress upon you that um, COVID-19 is really an opportunity to highlight mastery education, to really push us forward, to do great things for kids, and you're at the helm of this. Uh, so it's just an exciting opportunity to have a few minutes to talk to you about the importance uh, now more than ever of mastery-based education and the work that you're doing. So in closing, I wanna quote John Dewey, uh, who said, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, we rob them of tomorrow. You are preparing Idaho's students for tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your time together. I look forward to seeing you all very soon and congratulations on all of your hard work. So proud of you and can't wait uh, to tell the state what wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Barra. Appreciate your time, your effort in doing that and uh, sharing with us a few moments and inspiring us that the work is continuing on in so many different levels. Um, levels that uh, we don't have a glimpse of, that you're behind the scenes and above the scenes and across the street scenes taking care of, of uh, so many different perspectives. We appreciate that. Um, it is time now to unveil the framework, so I'll share my screen and we'll get to that. Ta-da! <laughs> All right. It only took months and months of looking to find this. Carla and I looked and looked. We realized as we looked what the, the state has done across the nation, trying to find trends that we have powerfully built into our statute right in front of us what we need to create a framework. So the purpose of the framework is to guide all things mastery. We wanted to keep it elegant and simple, but comprehensive. Um, it was not an easy process. Uh, Todd Driver and I, the director of content and curriculum, looked at these things with a hard eye. We felt uncomfortable giving feedback because it was something that we felt we needed to, but it was unpleasant to do so. Our, our folks who have responded, Lori and, um, and Sydney at Redesign have, have helped us with so many ways, Carla and her team and saying and doing things that we that are tough so we are very very excited to talk about it and it does meet two perspectives i want you to consider as we look at this the public policy and the parents we want them to understand and appreciate it so it's been written so they can read about mastery all in one page so when they read it once they understand it 
and hopefully appreciate it. And they want their students to be a part of it. And they want to call their teachers and they want to call their local educational communities, communities and say, what does this mean in our school? Because I know what it means to me and share those things. As practitioners and principals, we want you to look and say, this is what I'm doing in my classroom already to find those touchstones. I see in the chats that, hey, we're doing this stuff. Excellent. We want you to shake your head and go, yeah, yeah, and, not, and nail it down and say, this is explicitly what we do, and we want to grow explicitly in this area. So how can we support you do that in doing that through the grants financially so that you can make those grow things and share that within your local learning communities? So as principals and practitioners, take a look to see if it hits what you're doing and guide your works to be as innovative as you need to be. It's funded, founded in statute, informs all the P's, and it's the foundation of Mastery Work in Idaho. So it's all in one page. The next couple slides will be the entirety of the framework that is the one pager. There is a six page version that is aligned directly with the teaching standards of Idaho so that we can see that teaching aligns directly with what we are doing in Mastery and what students experience in the classroom. That will also be made available for you the next couple days so that you can see those things. So the colors, if you haven't noticed already, a little bit of a trend there, and we'll continue that. Looking at the first one, Students Empowered. The left-hand side shows what it'll look like all in one page. On the right-hand side, Students Empowered. The transparency and mastery-based learning system encourages students to play a greater role and invest more in their educational success. With the support of teachers, students take productive risks to learn and demonstrate the competencies as the focus shifts to learning rather than earning a grade. They make important decisions about their learning pathways, providing insight on projects, activities, and the individual support needed to reach their potential. Self-reflection and self-assessment, along with goal setting and progress monitoring, become regular habits. Through meaningful collaboration and routine teacher and peer feedback, learners support one another in their academic growth. While I was reading, I hope you're shaking your head. You're recognizing it. If there's something that we can do to grow, please share. Um, everything I do is informed by someone else, and everything I do in the future will be informed by the comments I receive at that current time and things that I'll share and, and, uh, and expose myself so that we can grow from it. I, I honor and respect open feedback and collaboration in these efforts. So if you see things here that we can improve on, please help us out. As we uh, time this out, we're just going to go through the next one and just read it together and give you the time in the next couple days to share feedback and any extra insight. Then hopefully print off and share with your uh, board, your principals, your peers, your parents, all those stakeholders. Learning personalized. Mastery Learning provides a foundation for personalized learning through flexible pacing and delivery of common expectations and performance-based assessments. Students receive timely differentiated supports based on individual academic strengths and needs, and the opportunity to share their understanding in multiple ways. Learning experiences offer opportunities to collaborate meaningful ways by leveraging student interests and connections to their community. Personalized learning, driven by meaningful interactions with teachers and peers, results in higher levels of student engagement and agency. I can't help but think of what I did in my career um, and my students and tagging like you did uh, Virgil a student the one that this matches the kid Mikey Johnny Billy Susie you know those kids that pop up in my brain when I think of my career um, did I allow these things to happen what can I do to make sure it does happen in that personalized learning competencies demonstrated we really tightened this up and went in alignment with the college and career readiness competencies, which were adopted by the State Board of Education. They provide the foundation for the Idaho Mastery Learning Framework. Competencies represent the knowledge, skills, and personal attributes that lead to success. Mastery learning environments focus on competencies through rigorous real-world applications that prepare students for diverse post-secondary pathways. Competencies make learning equitable and transparent through explicit, measurable, and transferable learning objectives. Um, it took me a long time to understand what competencies were. This definition in the middle there, competencies represent knowledge, skills, and personal attributes that lead to success, was created by so many inputs, so many websites, so many hard discussions where people pushed to know what that meant. 
hopefully we can grow with this experience and take a look at how we're addressing these things that sometimes um, are beyond our classroom and we want our students to walk away with. Mastery recognized. Coupled with flexibility and pace and delivery, mastery learning is grounded in the idea that students progress when they demonstrate mastery of key content and skills, regardless of the time spent in class or where instruction takes place. Students also have opportunities to demonstrate mastery in multiple formats. Mastery learning systems ensure learners have equitable access to supports that promptly identify and address learner needs so they can move at their optimal pace through and into new learning experiences. Again, um, this is not a perfect format for us to share all things, but what this is is a chance to learn together and then comment in the chat box. And so you've learned a lot today. You've seen your peers. You've been inspired by, by Virgil and his story, and you have your own stories that inspire you daily. You had a chance to talk about what training you would like. Now here's the chance to interlock the opportunity with what you want to do with what you can do and to build our sustainability plan. And so on this screen, we have a chance to respond in the chat box again, take a few minutes to deliberate that. Um, like Mother Teresa said, together we can build something wonderful. I think that's a, a neat quote for all of Idaho as we look at our sustainability plan and take a look at how we can support each other. So honor your expertise and growth. What could you teach others about? What would you give a class or a workshop on? We saw those needs before. I assume they'll be met by many Idaho educators. And we, if we don't find them in Idaho educators, we'll build that so we can find that and continue to grow with what we need to. So at this point, take a few minutes. We'll listen to some more jazzy music and think about how you could support the future of Idaho's mastery growth by creating a workshop yourself and what you could teach on or a class or whatever the format may be in the future. I assume many of you were having your own dance party and turned off your camera, but I hope you were continuing to dance during that music. And I saw the chat bar a little bit blow up with all sorts of amazing ideas. This is an exciting opportunity. So I am one dancing just because it's exciting for me and two, because of that jazzy music. Um, moving forward just a little bit, we need to take care of a few things as we get closer to wrapping up. The staging guide, like we said, it's a wonderful idea. What I saw when I first, when I first saw the staging guide from, from the years past, I was confusing at first, saw this wonderful idea developed from it, and we have taken it and made it into 
something that is going to be interactive, that collects and shares all the resources from IMIN. So it'll be usable for every stage of implementation. Now, it's based on the framework. It summarizes and makes visible nearly all the incubation innovative efforts of the IMIN. It's designed to support our learning communities in any stage of transition to student-centered learning, comprehensive, interactive, access to dozens, dozens of resources that support any level of implementation. And in my fewer forward thinking, to quote my friends from Salmon River, and sorry I forgot about you guys, um, in my future thinking, in my forward thinking, I want to take what you guys have proposed in the workshops and the ideas that you would talk about and add them to the staging guide. We would make it a resource that anybody could access through the valued uh, strengths that we have as, as Idaho and as educators to make this and continue to grow our staging guide, which becomes then our sustainability plan as we grow ourselves. Sneak peek, here is page 12. In the explore stage of looking at mastery, key activities and resources for everybody to click on, including workshops already, self-assessments, opportunities to look at protocols for communicating with students and exploring the Idaho competencies. Here are the competencies themselves. Um, based on some 2017 work of the IMIN, 2017 of board approval, looking at statewide consistency, and they look really cool too. Thanks to our friend Vicki and making those amazing for us. But please remember, these are optional. It's a place to start for your community to explore what you want your graduates to possess when they leave for their next adventure. I share these with a bunch of people around the state. Um, to quote a few of them, I wish we had these before. Um, these, these are exciting. We're excited to see what we can do with them. Um, and and uh, it's neat to see the alignment across the state. Again, not a mandate, but a place to start for your community. Again, these links will be shared out with everybody in the next few days. And I know, Todd, thank you for, for helping us out with that and recognizing that in our chat box. Sneak peek, we got the competencies. These are straight from the state board on the left-hand side. The sub-skills are on the right-hand side. You will recognize the format because you will see levels like we did before with the IMEN work. For level one, builds in level two. The bold font, builds from level one to level two, then level three with new bold font letters. We've decided to go with six levels, and each of these are being built currently um, for all those 10 areas, the state board approved competencies, which are based on research from national associations of college and career readiness. So you'll see something like this, with the icon, the competency, the skill, and the level. Other projects and information. As a reminder, um, no seat time waivers are needed anymore. Our state policy allows mastery to kind of, kind of be organic and be developed at that local control, um, which is so amazing that we have it to support us. So where are you gonna go with that? Talking to your school boards, recognizing that students can achieve credits by demonstrating mastery, um, communicating with them and saying, we need to have this as a system to allow this to happen because our students are different from each other. Our students are learning individually and we need to support them in their growth in ways that will allow them to reach their full potential. And that is individually, that's student-centered. Um, for Action Research Friends, those summaries are coming. We're looking forward to hearing from you a little bit later on this year, taking the work that you've done, which was cut off a little bit by COVID, but still sharing in your excitement next year and hearing what you've learned and going deeper. I'm um, sorry about that. It says guide to determining mastery. Sorry about that overlap. Um, when uh, we ask districts to communicate, it's very unfair for districts to do so without guidance. So we will make sure that guidance is there for you. Again, a framework of scaffolding to say, hey, local control, we need to develop what mastery looks like. Here's an example for you to start with again. So we'll have assessments, exemplars, statute type written stuff. So it'll look a formal and official um, so that you can say, this is what the state has given us to start with so that we can move forward with these conversations regarding statute. Look forward to that support and giving you the opportunity to build on that. And again, that's coming. Communication plan. Our goal, 
clarity, simple, yet comprehensive, which we have termed as elegant. So we hope what we've developed meets those, those goals. And for the future, we look forward to weekly, bi-weekly virtual opportunities for professional net, uh, development, networking, taking the workshops you have and giving you time to do so, to give them and paying you to do that. Um, we'll have monthly newsletters that talk about the action research, the celebrations that we caught, caught a glimpse of today in SDE efforts. We'll also have regional conferences, professional development and networking, and two annual conferences as things allow, of course. All right, grants application, funding. We have the funding, like Superintendent Barr mentioned. It's an exciting thing. But please take care of the grant money. There was a lot of money outstanding allocated to you that needs to be spent. If you need help with that, please contact me. There are seven categories to spend that, um, to utilize that, to, to see how it can be used. Um, and I've heard some amazing stories of how it was used in the past. I will share out a sample budget in the next few weeks um, as we look forward to the application process, which is being developed and will be coming out soon. June 22nd is our last day to submit for this year. And we hope that we will have our application ready by then so you can get money and have stuff for this fall. Sorry, things were just delayed. We know how it goes, um, craziness of the times. So application process still in development, but it will be found in the framework. Those four areas, where do you see yourself? Where do you wanna go? Create a budget narrative that allows you to get there. A few changes and a few shifts, but basically still based in statute and, and a narrative that explains and we'll communicate more about those things and make sure we get our office managers and financial officers involved. All right, I believe, I, I can't tell who this is because it didn't transfer over. I believe this is Salmon River. So sorry guys. <laughs> yes, there it is. Some of their highlights. Their culture of revision, highlight that. If you don't have that at your school, call them up. They do an amazing job. Um, and their creativity through project-based learning. It's so exciting to talk to them. They've got an amazing team up there, like so many teams across the state. Uh, I learned so much, and we want to make this available to everybody. So again, I'll share this the next few days. Um, in conclusion, I want to thank you and tell a story, a real quick story. We have a new puppy and a dog who loves me. Um, but I walked in the other day, and they came running in, but didn't know I was there. So I walked in the door before them, they didn't see me, and they went past me. Um, they didn't see me at all. Um, but then I said, Hey guys, I'm over here. They turned around and wagged their tails and we had, you know, a face looking little celebration. Um, I want to celebrate with you a little bit, not so much like a puppy, but just to recognize when I see you, I'm excited. When I talk about these things, I'm excited. Uh, this is something that I love doing every day and I'm inspired by what you do, by what Carla does, by what Lori does and by what our team here at the SDE does and how we can move forward with the future. It's almost exactly our time to be done. So thank you for an hour and a half of your time. Please, uh, again, make any comments in the chat box. We'll collect those things. It has been recorded. We'll save this as we can and move forward with that and share out links to all these things and expect those comments back and, and further insight from you as we grow mastery across Idaho.